Hello everybody. So continuing our study of music, we're going to get into chapter two of our theory book, which is uh, once again available in the GitHub repository under this video. And we're going to start covering scales. In particular today, we're going to be covering the major scale. So let's get into it. The student will see from the preceding chapter on notation that in the alphabetical order of sounds, there are seven different pitches, each called by one of the first seven letters of the alphabet. As we said before, the distance between two pairs of notes, i.e. E to F and B to C, is a half step, and the distance between all the other notes is a whole step. The space between the notes, a whole step apart, can be filled in by the use of, an, of accidentals so that instead of the original seven tones, we, actu we have actually 12 different pitches. And if I were to play that... So from C up to B... However, in any one particular piece of music, all 12 of these pitches will seldom be used. A certain number of tones will generally be chosen from there, uh, from these 12 possible pitches, and the composer will use only these selected tones. Theoretically, any group of pitches may be selected from those available and the piece of music written using these. Over a long period of time, however, composers have used two basic groups of tones so frequently that we have given them a name. These groups of tones are called scales. These scales may begin on any one of the 12 possible pitches, but they also present the same arrangement or pattern of whole steps and half steps. And we're going to be covering the major scale today. The major scale. If we start on any one note designated by a letter of the alphabet and go up the alphabetical succession of tones, at the eighth step, we will arrive at the same letter from each from which we started. This reappearance of the same letter as a higher or lower pitch produces what is known as an octave. A major scale is a succession of eight notes from any one letter name to its octave so arranged that a half step appears between the third and fourth degrees and also between the seventh and eighth degrees reckoning upwards all of the other degrees will be a whole step apart so if i play that here this is the so one two three four half step between three and four five, six, seven, eight, half step between seven and eight. It will be noticed from the above example that the white notes of the piano from C to its octave C form a natural major scale with the whole steps and half steps in the right places. The major scale may not only begin on C as, is, as its keynote, but it may begin on any one of the 12 possible pitches. But when we begin on any other letter name, using the tones of the natural scale represented by the white keys of the piano, we find that the required order of whole steps and half steps is not maintained. So, if I were to play G, for instance. So, you see that in G major, uh, the 3 to 4 is indeed a half step, but then between 6 and 7 is a minor, is the uh, half step instead of 7 and 8. And then if I do that same thing in F, so you see the half step is now between the 4th and 5th scale degrees, not between the 3rd and 4th. But the 7 to 8 half step is maintained. In a 
later video, we'll go over how these scales, uh, both he here G, if you were to play all the white keys on the piano, you actually get what are called different modes. And there are seven different modes total for each of the scales. But right now, we'll just be focusing on the major scale, which is once again, three whole, whole steps followed by a half step and then, or actually I should say steps one, two, and three are whole steps, and then between three and four half steps, and then four, five, and six whole steps, uh, four, five, six, and seven whole steps, and then between seven and eight, a half step. In order to bring the half steps to their correct positions, it will be necessary to employ alterations or accidentals represented on the piano by the black keys. For the first example above, the scale beginning on G it will be necessary to use F sharp as the seventh degree. And for the scale beginning of F, we will have to have B flat for the fourth degree. So I'm going to play it first without the alteration and then with the alteration. Oh, sorry, without the alteration. Now with the alteration to make this a major scale, You see how I have to it I have to increase the seventh scale degree in order to make that a half step between the seventh and the eighth scale degrees. And then in F, now between the third and fourth, it has to be a half step. The student should notice from the above examples that the first four notes and the last four notes of any major scale are exactly alike, as far as the arrangement of whole steps and half steps is concerned. Each group of four notes is made up of two whole steps and one half step. So that's so two whole steps and then a half step, making four and a group of four successive tones is called a tetrachord. And then a half step, so whole step, whole step, and then half step. So. Okay. So that he may become familiar, uh, become thoroughly familiar with each key, the student must write out all of the scales using each one of the 12 different pitches as the keynote. The method should be something like the following. Write the eight notes in succession above the keynote which is given, that is one note for each successive line or space. Mark a tie where the half steps should appear, i.e. between the third and fourth and the seventh and eighth scaled steps in the scale. All of the other steps in the scale will be whole steps, in the above example, from B to C is a half step, so we sharp the C to make a whole step. C sharp to D is a half step, add a sharp to D to make a whole step. D sharp to E is a half step, so it should be E to F is a half step, sharp as it should be. E to F is a half step, sharp the F to make a whole step. F sharp to G is a half step, add a sharp to make a whole step. G sharp to A is a half step, add a sharp to make a whole step. A sharp to B is a half step, as it should be. This produces the B major scale. So I actually probably should. Uh, in, a, in a later video, we'll actually go through this process that they lay out here in the book. Um, and that way we can determine uh, how to write our scales. Okay, so that'll be a, that'll be the video. After this, we'll do all of the major scales. Um, let's see here. So, and you see, actually, I, I should have scrolled down a little farther. So you see this process that they describe, you produce the B major scale. So if you see from B to C is a whole step or is a half step. So we have to sharp C to make a whole step. C sharp to D is a half step. We have to add a sharp to D to make a whole step. D sharp to E is a half step, as it should be. So the first tetrachord is good. E to F is a half step. So we need to sharp the F to make a whole step. F sharp to G is a half step. 
add a sharp to make a whole step. G sharp to A is a half step. Add a sharp to make a whole step. And then A sharp to B is a half step as it should be. So we just created. Down here. So there's our tetra chords. There we go. And that is our B major scale. This procedure must be carried out carefully for each of the 12 major scales. So we'll do that in these in the next video. To save unnecessary writing, the essential sharps or flats occurring in these scales are placed at the beginning of a piece of music immediately after the clef sign and on their proper lines or spaces. This arrangement of the accidentals at the beginning of a piece is called the time signature. The order in which the sharps occur will be F, C, G, D, A, E, and B. They are placed on the staff in that order according to the following pattern. So you see, we have already covered this pattern, haven't we, in our previous video on writing out or on the circle of fifths. Um, but we will, I'm sure we'll be making a lot more of it in the future. The flats occur in exactly the reverse order, i.e. B, E, A, D, G, C, F, and are placed like this on the treble clef and the bass clef. The student can remember that in flat keys, the name of the last of the next to the last flat in the key in the signature will also be the keynote of this scale. So in this particular key signature, you see that the next to the last, because you remember that we travel from left to right, so B, E, A, D, if we only have B, E, A, D flatted in the scale, then we know that next to the last uh, um, scale um, or accidental is the name of the key, which in the case, it's A flat major. In the sharp keys, the keynote will always be the tone above the last sharp in the signature. So in this particular scale, we have F sharp, C sharp, G sharp. So the next note above G sharp is A. And the tones that are produced, if you play this, there, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, A sharp, E sharp, B. And then in, uh, in uh, the flats are B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat, F. So you see, they're just complete um, opposites of each other. Here are all the key signatures with their respective notes. G, D, A, E, B, F sharp, C sharp, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, and C flat. And, if, and as you remember, we went over this in our circle of fifths, and that's a really nice way to go about um, holding these keys and looking at them in the right relation to each other. The degrees of the scale have technical names which the student must memorize and use whenever he refers to them. The first scale degree is the tonic. So if I were to do this in C major, that's your tonic. That's first degree. Second degree, supertonic. Third degree, mediant. Fourth degree, subdominant. Fifth degree, dominant. Sixth degree, submediant. And seventh degree, leading tone. And then back to tonic. In adding, in addition to these names, it should be observed that each tone is represented by a Roman numeral corresponding to its position in the scale. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. All of the tones in the major scale and in the minor scale which follows have a greater or lesser degree of importance. The tonic, or keynote, is the most important of the tones in the scale, or key. Next in importance is the dominant and then the subdominant. So let me do D major scale. So the tonic is the most important of the tones in the scale or key. Next in importance is the dominant, which would be the fifth scale degree. And then the subdominant. 
These are known as the principal or primary tones. The supertonic, submediant, and mediant being the subordinate or secondary tones of the scale. The seventh degree of the scale, called the leading tone, is the most individual degree of the scale. Its main function is a melodic one, that of leading a melody to the tonic note. There we go. So the, uh, the leading tone for D major would be C sharp. There we go. Now, um, I'm not going to mention how the names are derived here, but if they don't mention it in this particular chapter, then we'll go over why it's called um, uh, dominant, subdominant, uh, mediant, submediant, and supertonic. Okay. So now we have the triads built on the three primary tones of a scale, i.e. the tonic with the dominant located a fifth above it and the subdominant located a fifth below it give the scale its feeling of tonality. So they actually mentioned that, that the reason why it's dominant and subdominant dominant is because it's uh, relative to the fifth above and the fifth below. So if I play A major, for instance, and hopefully you can see that on the... Okay. So if I play the fifth above, a, I have E, so that would be the dominant, subdominant, sub meaning below, so it's below fifth, so that would be D. There we go. And the, okay, so they were talking about the triads built on the three primary tones of a scale, i.e. the tone with the dominant located a fifth above it, and the subdominant located a fifth below it, give the scale its feeling of tonality. This feeling of tonality gives to each degree of a scale a particular melodic and harmonic function. These will be described in detail in a later chapter. It will be sufficient to discuss the general melodic tendencies of the tones here. So what do they mean here by the triads? That's where you take the scale degrees and you build a chord from it. And then if I build a chord from the dominant using again the keys that are given or that are in the scale okay and then if i do the fifth below a it's d so tonic dominant dominant subdominant rest tones the first, third, and fifth degrees of the scale, i.e. the tonic, mediant, and dominant, are relatively inactive melodically. These tones have a tendency to remain stationary, not to progress to other tones. The reason for this will be explained later when we talk about the overtone series. Active tones. The second, fourth, sixth, and seventh degrees of the scale, i.e. the supertonic subdominant, so if I play these out here, so they say the first, third, and fifth degrees of the scale, let's do the scale of G major. So the first, third, and fifth degrees, first, third, and fifth, tonic, mediant, and dominant, are relatively inactive melodically. The active tones, the second, fourth, second, fourth, and sixth, uh, yeah, so fourth, second, second, fourth, and second, fourth, and sixth, and the seventh uh, de uh, degrees of the scale, i.e., the supertonic, subdominant, submediant, and leading tone are very active melodically. These tones have a tendency to progress to the nearest inactive tone of a scale. So the second, uh, the, the second would either go up or down. The fourth would want to go to the fifth or the third. And then the sixth has it, uh, the sixth has a tendency either to go, it would probably just go to the fifth or it could go up. Okay. Um, and then the seventh. Seventh generally will want to lead to the tonic. So the leading tone will want to go to the tonic. 
fact, the, the active tone with the strongest tendency to move is the leading tone. This seventh degree is separated from the tonic by only a half step, and its strong upward tendency towards the tonic will cause it to be normally resolved to this eighth degree. There we go. The active tone with the next strongest tendency is the fourth. It lies a half step above the median and will resolve down to the rest tone. Down to the median. The active tendencies of the sixth and second degrees are not as strong as those of the seventh and the fourth, because these two tones are separated from their nearest rest tone by a whole step. The sixth degree then will normally resolve one step downward to the fifth, and the second degree lying equidistant between the first and third degrees may resolve either to the of these rest tones. However, the second degree will most often move melodically down to the tonic. So this would be your super uh, your super tonic, so it would travel down to the tonic. And the sub uh, and the leading tone back to tonic. Sixth will normally resolve one step downward to the fifth. There we go. All right. So our rest tones, they lay out this very nice chart here. Our rest tones are one, three, five, and eight. So let's do the key of A flat major. Ah. Ah. I should use my logic and figure it out that way. Um, I, I could also use my, my key signature, so let's look for A flat. A flat has four flats, so B flat, E flat, A flat, and D flat. So um, A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F, G, A. So using that, let's take a look at the, that's our minors already. So let's take a look at our minor scale. So our rest tone. So this is in C major, but we're going to just transpose it up to A. So they say that the first, third, and fifth scale and the eighth scale degrees are rest tones. So those are all of our rest tones. And then our active tones would be those are all of our active tones so rest tones active tones there you go fun. All right, and that is all we're going to be covering for today. So that was our scales, our, our, our major scales, the idea of what a major scale is. It's two groups of tetrachords, right? So that is the same. Two whole steps followed by a half step. And then by half step so it's two groups of those there you go what else uh, the positioning of the the positioning of the uh, of the half step the third and fourth scale degree and the seventh and eighth uh, and then uh, in order to build a major scale off of any of the 12 tones you will it, it will be necessary to either sharp or flat particular tones in order to produce the correct positionings between the different steps. And then, of course, our key signature here, the names of the scales, 
or of the scale degrees tonic super tonic so tonic let's uh let's build one off of um f major so tonic super tonic median subdominant now subdominant it's actually down here so that's subdominant the fifth below our tonic and then the fifth above submediant is the third below and then our leading tone so tonic supertonic mediant subdominant dominant submediant leading tone and there we go all right thank you very much for watching and have a wonderful day bye bye